Yes, indeed. And we're looking ahead of the forthcoming Oshun State governorship elections. Today we've got Mr. Ulugmenga Kintola, who is the governorship candidate of Alliance for Democracy. Thank you for coming on this morning. Good morning. Well, looking through uh, what Anneke has said, uh, we know that they're, they're deploying about 40,000 policemen uh, by the federal government. Anneke says 8,000 UCOP members will also be available in addition to uh, 15,000 ad hoc staff. That's quite something. But uh, are you impressed with the preparations they've put in so far? Um, I'll say yes, because um, we've had various meetings with the um, President Electoral Commissioner. Yeah. And um, the things we discussed, they were quite useful. And I think one of the key um, elements to point out from those discussions was the fact that there will be privacy for the voters, i.e., you're going to be in your polling booth and there won't be anybody trying to see what you're trying to do. So um, I think that is key. And also we were told that uh, minimum distance will be maintained by other people apart from voters, from the polling booth. What do you mean by minimum key. distance? Distance, um, we were told like a How many meters? 100 meters, which I think is uh, quite key. Um, if that can be uh, maintained, I think it's, uh, it's going to be um, an election that would be considered to be free in that particular. Yeah, but haven't voters always had uh, uh, privacy when they are voting? Because they, they clearly will always stick with the modified open ballot system of the elections. You know, if, what if specifically it, would they be doing differently? No, I mean, it's, I next you answer that. But the, the point I'm making is that, um, for instance, when you are voting, mm. someone can actually see the box they are actually from printing. Mm. Now, would a private polling booth, I want to believe that there would be like a, 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 a cage where you have like um, a platform and you can just do your thumb printing and nobody will see what you're doing. Did they show the politicians during that interaction? Did they show no, they any wouldn't. sample how the, the box would look like? No, they were just verbal. Um, yeah, they, they've had other sessions, um, but I didn't um, witness any sample being shown. But what we've been told is that um, there's going to be privacy of the voter you know, so that you wouldn't have anybody prying or trying to see what you're doing, or you, you even attempting to show someone whom you voted for. But the booth that was before, yes. to a large extent, was designed to be private, apart from the fact that you're not walking with your whole body, but at the point where you're doing your thumb printing, it's supposed to be, it was actually built to be covered, and then nobody was supposed to be standing close. So if Einek hasn't said they're bringing a different design of a boot, what makes you think that plan's going to work? I think the distance as well is very key. Now, if you, if you can maintain some distance from uh, the polling boot, I think that will assist our way up as well. So what is key as well is for the security uh, officials that will be present to ensure that that minimum distance is maintained. Mm. In terms of other preparations, you say you've had several meetings with yes. INEC and you are confident that this election will go credibly. Oh yes, and also um, based on the antecedents of the resident electoral commissioner, um, because we are made to understand that he organized the 2014 election as well. And from the findings and from the results of that, um, we were informed that you know, they were, the, the, the issues um, at that particular election were minimal. So we, we, we have confidence in him. In the electoral commissioner. In the electoral commissioner, yes. And Not and the, what about his, the rest of the team? 40,000 um, policemen deployed for the elections. Well, it's, uh, it's not the first time that it's happened. Um, they have their reasons for doing that. But what I can assure you is that Oshun, Oshun people are very, very peaceful um, citizens of um, Nigeria. They, I don't believe there's any need for that. I've gone around the nooks and crannies of the state, been to all the territorial local governments of the state. They don't need that. Uh, but if they believe that's the way to go to maintain security, I uh, want to believe that um, they will just be wasting resources because Australians are very peaceful. So, uh, one of the key concerns, which I believe is part of what you were alluding to, uh, that I told stakeholders that meeting is to curb vote buying Correct. Uh, for, for that particular election. So, uh, in light of all that you have heard for the meetings you attended and the ones you didn't, are you really that confident and to what extent that, um, yeah, come this election, you have nothing to worry about, everyone's vote, people will get what they deserve? Um, I think that's all we can do. We just have to be hopeful. 
and um, and we've tried as much as possible as well to get let the people know that selling your vote is criminal and um, you're actually selling your future and they've been advised to take their minds back to situations when they've been opportuned or they've actually sold their votes or someone had loaded you with some money what is the implication of that in your lives oh. imagine someone giving you ten thousand naira four years ago if you divide that you know for the duration you're probably looking at about six naira you know per day is that what you're worth so we we, we did a lot of enlightenment to let uh, the people key into believing that that is the wrong thing to do and it's not going to it is actually going to make them more retrogressive instead of you know um pushing them to prosperity yeah in spite of the complaints that people have had about uh salaries the state of the uh economy in that particular state and yet you have 48 of you <laughs> who want to go in there what is it that the rest of people that people are not seeing that 48 <laughs> people are targeting for a job which they say uh no funds to run the state why are you going into this well in fact the the debt profile is quite high as of um 20, 20, 2017 figure, we're looking at around 70 billion. And by the time you have salary areas, pensions, and whatever, you, uh, I want to believe it should be as high as over 200 billion. Uh, but for me, what I see is, is the potentials. Uh, potentials, the people, uh, the, the capacity of um, the um, Oceanians, and also, most importantly, you look at uh, agriculture. Uh, we need to move agriculture from farming you know, to manufacturing. The value ch chain addition, uh, you have, you know, um, logistics you have storage you have processing you have manufacturing you know if you look at that value chain there's a lot of opportunities available there and also we have uh, the beneficiation of solid minerals we have three mining licenses available to be picked up we have four coring licenses that are available we have 10 exploration licenses you know i mean to explore gold quartz uh, feldspar you know talc uh, zinc lead and a host of other mineral deposits and also we have one million ounces of gold in Ipirindo, which is one of the seven clusters where we have gold. And it's only just looking at a square meter of land. And in that square meter of land, going 100 meters deep, they find one million ounces of gold. We have 20 million tons of talc and 700 tons of feldspar. These last two ingredients, these are the main you know, input for the production of paint and ceramics. Now, you can imagine having uh, bringing factories that produce those two um, I, um, uh, paints and ceramics and using those items. And most importantly, we have tourism. We have five unique mountains in our state. We have the Okiakamara in Ikire, we have in Elisha, we have in Iragbiji, we have in Ikirun, and we have in Nife. These are unique mountains that should be exposed to the rest of the world. We have tourists, you know, from uh, other parts of the world, even from Nigeria. And also we have some important features. You know, we have um, the waterfalls in Okay, I mean, in Erin. And then we have the fact that even Ife as a town, Ife is being, you know, um, adjured to be one of the oldest towns in the world. Now imagine having a UNESCO recognition for Ife and then expose that to South America, expose that to the Caribbean. You can imagine the influx, you know, of people from other parts of the world. And what would that do? That's obviously going to bring a lot of employment to our people. And it's, it's, it's not just looking at the, uh, the, 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 the debts, first of all, this debt, which I haven't got the exact figure, but based on the two, 2017 figure, 170 billion, I would look at um, paying off the debt, you know, eliminating the debt burden. How, uh, yeah. how do you, yeah, with all this, all the potentials you have talked yes. about, there, there are those who will be wondering, other people have seen the same potentials as well, and then probably used it for their campaigns. So what is it that you're seeing, and how are you going to be able to pay off the debt? How? Uh, I'll take that first, uh, Sir Taibbi. The elimination of the debt burden. Um, this debt is owed to lenders, both domestic and external, and they have names. Um, first is to restructure you know, the terms and conditions for the payment of this loan. This will free up you know, some, uh, some money.